Alright, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. In particular, we're going to talk about legendary creature lairs. I had somebody ask me about legendary creature lairs. I think that was yesterday and I didn't really have enough information. I realised I needed to do a video on the topic. So I've done a few notes and I've got something to present to you. So first of all, legendary creatures are... Uh, that's a creature that's really sort of been around quite a long time. They're usually listed as legendary. They have to spend great amounts of time, quite a long time, in that particular environment for it to be classified as a le legendary creature lair. Take on some special effects and actions of its own, which the, uh, the creature can use. You can look on page 11 of the Monster Manual for details on lairs. There is a couple of captions, uh, paragraphs, a little bit of information on how they actually work. So what I thought I would do is just go over that information first. Once I've explained that as best I can, I'm going to provide you with an example and then there'll be questions and answers. You can ask questions to your heart's delight after that. There are two basic things that each layer will tend to have. That is the layer actions, where they, the layer actually gets to do something if the legendary creature wants it to do something. So they are activated and harnessed by that legendary creature, whether it be a dragon or a beholder or whatever. Then there are things that just keep happening, and they are called regional effects. They happen pretty much all the time. As long as the legendary creature resides in the lair and is still alive, then that regional effect stays in place. Why does a lair uh, become, uh, have this special property? Uh, and the concept is that the creature you're dealing with is magical in some sense and it's imbuing or passing on or magic is leaking from that creature into the environment that it, it lives in and so the lair becomes magical itself that's the whole concept behind lairs lairs always have an initiative of 20 so you don't roll for an initiative for a lair and if it has a tie with a player character or an npc then the lair will lose that initiative role. Uh, basically, it's going to go, you know, so both player character and the lair have an initiative of 20. The lair goes after the player character. Now, when it comes to using those things, those lair actions, the creature actually has to decide to do that. And it has to be able to make a, an action, take an action itself. So if it's incapacitated or it's dead, it can't use, or unconscious, it can't actually use the lair actions. It needs to be actually conscious and able to actually do something. If the creature is surprised in a combat, then the, the lair actions can't be used until after the surprise round. Next, legendary effects are always in effect, as I said. They can disappear immediately when a legendary creature is killed, or it might take some time for the, the effect to slowly wear off. It might take days, um, it might take hours, it depends. Usually it's hour, um, hours and days. Um, the most common ones that I've seen are days. You roll a, a, some sort of dice and that tells you how long it will last. So that's the basic concept of the lair. Now let's go into an example. I have pulled up on the monster manual the probably the, the best option I think in terms of an example and that is the ancient red dragon or the adult red dragon and you can find the information on page 99 of the monster manual so I'm going to go through this very very carefully just sort of explain it as I go when it comes to using those legendary actions you can only use one action at a time and you don't use the legendary action of the lair okay you don't use the legendary action of the lair uh, until you get to that initiative. Does that make sense? So you can only do it once. It's not like you get three. You can't use it three. It's not a, a legendary creature action. It's a lair action. So once on the initiative of 20. The options here for the red dragon are a magma erupts and a, there's a tremor shake and there's also a volcanic gas. And I'll read through them and explain them a little bit and then we'll go on to the regional effects there's quite a few, there's like three different regional effects for the red dragon and not all lairs will have as many as that. So for magma erupting, from a point on the ground the dragon can see within 20 feet of it, uh, it creates a 20 foot high, 5 foot 
radius geyser. So that's a stream of magma that sort of shoots out of the ground in its lair. Each creature in the geyser's area must make a DC or difficulty class 15 saving throw. That's a dexterity saving throw. Or they're gonna take 21 damage, or you roll six six-sided dice, or 6d6. Uh, that's on a failed save. If you succeed on the save, or the player, the characters, or who is in the lair, if they succeed, they only take half damage. So it's pretty powerful, and that's essentially like fighting another creature. The lair is like another creature in itself, which is really awesome, and legendary creatures should have that sort of thing. Uh, next is the Tremor. Now, the Tremor Shake is not quite as powerful, and it states the lair in a 60-foot radius around the dragon, so it has to be around the dragon, each creature other than the dragon on the ground, have to be on the ground, can't be flying, okay, they must succeed at a DC 15 dexterity saving throw or they're not prone. So that's pretty tame. It doesn't do very much, but it has a, a long range and you can affect quite a few different characters. This is probably the one that I would use the least. Then the next one is the volcanic gas. Now the volcanic gas is pretty, pretty potent because it imbues conditions rather than causing uh, hit point damage. Hit point damage is nice, but some of the conditions that you can part onto your player's characters are vastly more powerful. So volcanic gas from a cloud in a 20 foot radius sphere centered on a point the dragons can see within 120 feet. So your range is quite large and it's an area effect, so it's very, very powerful this effect. The sphere spreads around corners, very nice, and its area is lightly obscured, so it's going to affect vision. It lasts until the initiative count of 20 on the next round. On the next round, so you, it's going to last a whole round, which is awesome. Each creature that starts its turn in that cloud must succeed at a DC 13 constitution saving throw. Now a DC 13 constitution saving throw is pretty low. If you're dealing with um, adult red dragons or um, ancient red dragons, most of the characters are going to be quite high and they're going to have no problem saving that particular DC. But that's beside the point. Basically, you're going to become poisoned if you fail the save. But while poisoned in this way, they are also incapacitated. Now I've done a video on incapacitated. It's a really bad condition to have. It pretty much will shut down the player's characters. So what you do when you're using these is you decide out of the three which one you want to use. You can't pick the same legend um, lair, lair action every single turn. So I would bump it back and forth from the magma eruption to the volcanic gas. If you really want to do the tremor um, shake you could but I think it's a bit tame. So that's what you can use in combat. Now there are the regional effects. Now there are three regional effects for the red dragon. Uh, one it states here small earthquakes are common within six miles of the lair. So that's really cool but it's not going to necessarily uh, do anything in the middle of combat. It, what it's going to do is going to add a little bit of flavor and interest as they are journeying to that lair. Uh, water sources within one mile of the lair are supernaturally warm. So they are warmed up and they're also tainted by sulfur, which means they're not going to be drinkable. You don't go drinking um, sulfur in water. It's not good for you. So that's another thing. They're going to have a lot of trouble actually finding water sources that are close by. And it's also another, I guess it's another indication that they are in a volcanic location. And it's also, they might not know, but they are also getting closer and closer to the dragon lair. Rock fishes within one mile of the dragon lair from uh, form portals. Now these portals go to the elemental plane of fire, which means that elemental creatures can pass through that portal and may reside or dwell in the location around the lair. So it's, a, it's essentially created its own little minions. You've got to get through the elementals before you get to the dragon lair. Now these all take place all the time. Regional effects just keep going. If the dragon or the legendary creature is killed, there's usually a stipulation about how long the regional effects will stay, uh, stay on. In this case, you roll a 10-sided dice and that's how many days it's going to last. So that is the basics of layers. You've got regional effects, you've got layer actions, and uh, I've given you an example. 
I don't know if I need to necessarily say anything more, but if you found this video helpful or informative, please share, like, and subscribe if you haven't done already. Look, there is a bell button. You can press that and get occasional uh, notifications. Although I don't think that really matters because I do a video every single day. So, you, you know, if you look on my, on my channel, you'll see, up oh, there's another video. But um, if you did find it helpful, it's, uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you did. That's awesome. If you have questions, you can ask those questions after I do my sort of sign out. I will stay on and answer questions. I will also answer any questions you decide to put in the comments if you weren't present for the live stream or you don't want to be um, punching things in during the live stream and you feel a bit self-conscious about that process. Now, if you want to support my channel, um, the best way is to watch my videos. That's always one way. Uh, and try not to skip all of the um, the ads. I know that skippable ad in the front, I, I skip them every time. That's just me. Um, but if you want to support my channel, usually there's an affiliate link below where you can buy stuff online. If you buy stuff online, you support me. It doesn't cost you any more. And um, essentially, whatever the link is, uh, I get a commission. That's all it is. I get a commission, and whoever you're buying from basically makes less profit because I get part of their profit. That's essentially how it works. That's the best way to support me. Now, I'm going to sign out, but I'm not going anywhere. Remember that. I'm not disappearing. I'm just saying, until next time, keep rolling those 20s.